and welcome back to Easy Peasy German. My name is Brina and I am here to teach you guys some German. And as most of you are just starting to learn German, I thought we're gonna do something extra easy peasy today. We're gonna talk about German words that you already know from the English language. That's why it's in particular good for beginners who are just starting to learn German. However, it may also be useful for people who are already a little bit more advanced. And since this is a very wide area and there's a lot of different kinds of words in the English language that have to do something with German, I decided to split this presentation into two parts. So we're gonna talk about German German loan words in today's part one and in part two in the next video we're gonna talk about cognates or neocognates but for now let's ignore these cognates and focus on the loan words loan words are actually words that come from the German language originally but have been imported into English at one point, mostly not that far in the past, hardly as late as in the 20th century. And these loan words are nowadays used in English, partly with their original meaning, or partly in a slightly different way, and partly in a slightly different spelling as well. Okay, so that means our topic today is over 20 German loan words that you already know. Let's get it done. So let's start with our first loan word and it. <coughs> Thank you. And that's our first loan word. Gesundheit, which comes from the German Gesundheit, which means health. And of course, that's a common way to respond to a sneeze in the German language and also in many other languages like for example in Spanish salute. Many people are surprised to hear that this word is used as a response for a sneeze in the English language but it's not that uncommon I guess it depends a little bit on the country. Okay the next one is the fest yeah or also in German das fest which means party 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 more commonly used are actually the words party, yeah, of course, or festival, I think. But if you tell any English speaking person you're on your way to a beer fest, I'm sure they will understand what you mean. Okay, next one, der Kindergarten in German or Kindergarten. Literally translated means children's garden and it is a common word for kind of a preschool or child care facility. Okay, next one is the word angst. So in German when we use the word angst, we usually refer to fear. Whereas in English, angst or existential angst usually seems to refer to someone being worried about their life situation. In German it just means fear, the angst. And now that we were just talking about fear, let's come to the next one. Poltergeist. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a German word, yeah, der Poltergeist. But this is not very useful, I think. I mean, honestly, who believes in ghosts? I mean, I think that's totally... Oh my gosh! What's that? Did you see that? Well, let's talk about the next word, diesel. Even though you may think, ah, this just sounds like a chemical word or a scientific word, diesel fuel is actually derived from the German diesel motor, yeah, which is a diesel engine, which was invented by Rudolf Diesel, a German guy, in 1892. Okay, our next word is kit. Kit is used in both languages for cheesy, kind of cheap looking, over sentimental stuff. You know, like useless and tasteless decorational stuff. Like, we Germans don't have that. Yeah, we don't do kit. Hey, why is there a picture of a German Gartens 
Zwerg hier. It's no kid. That's um, cultural heritage. Look at this one. He's really cool. He's cool, isn't he? Our next word is Wanderlust. And this word must not be missing in my list. Wanderlust is my favorite German loan word in the English language. The term originates from Wandern, which is to hike, and Lust, which is a desire. The word describes an inner restlessness which causes a desire to travel and explore the world. The interesting thing is though that this term is not used in the German language. Our German equivalent of this word is das Fernweh. And I love this word because it describes my personality so well. In case you didn't know, I'm not only an online German teacher, I'm actually a world traveling online teacher and I have been traveling around the world for many years meanwhile. But that's another story, nothing for today. So if you are blessed or cursed with Fernweh, why don't you go on a trip into the Hinterland and do some upseiling? Das Hinterland is a German term meaning the land behind. It is used to describe an area behind the shoreline of a river or the ocean or also to describe the outskirts of a city. In German, Hinterland is usually used in a more general way to describe areas with low population and underdeveloped infrastructure. And upseiling also comes from the German, we say sich abseilen in German, it's a reflexive verb, and it comes from the adventure sports area and means to climb down a mountain, a cliff or a big rock while being secured on a rope. And for your trip into the hinterland, don't forget your rucksack. It's another word for backpack, which is probably a more common word in the English language. And it comes from the German word der Rucksack, which comes from Rücken, the back, and Sack, which is a sack. So a Rucksack is literally a back sack. Next one is die Schadenfreude. That's how we pronounce it in German. I guess your English speakers probably say Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. This word literally translated means damage pleasure, but it usually refers to someone being happy about bad things happening to someone else. I'm a bit embarrassed that a word with such a nasty meaning is coming from the German language. I mean, I think you should never be happy when something bad happens to someone else. This is no reason. <laughs> Did you see this chick? <laughs> this made my day. By the way, did you see her? She almost looked like my doppelganger. And this is our next word, doppelganger. Or in German we say der doppelganger. It means in both languages the same. It's a look alike, yeah? Like a double of yourself. Someone that looks like you. Okay, enough words for today? No, I don't think so. We haven't even talked about food and beverages. So let's start with deli. So English is used either for sliced meat usually or the place where you can buy this. When I learned the word deli, I didn't have any clue that it had to do with a German word originally. But if you have a look at the whole word, which is delicatessen, then you get your German word. Because die delicatessen is a term that we use in German also nowadays, but in a different context. It just means the delicacies in general, but any kind of fancy, high quality, delicious food. Okay, next word is hamburger yeah or der hamburger in german 
which is probably the most famous German loan word around the world. Hamburger, this term refers to inhabitants of the German city Hamburg, of course, yeah, which we call Hamburg. Many of these people from Hamburg actually emigrated to the US in the beginning of the 19th century and supposedly they took some delicatessen with them to America and one of them later on became the hamburger as we know it nowadays. Talking about meat, how about schnitzel now? Das schnitzel in German is a term used in the English language as well and it usually refers to meats which are coated with a mixture of eggs, flour and crumbled bread and then fried. And as I could find out in my research, the word Wiener Schnitzel, which is an Austrian dish, dates back to the year 1845. Yeah, so this has been in usage in the German language for a long time. Okay, let's have a guess about the next one. Which of these are German terms? A. Bratwurst B. Frankfurter or C. Wiener So, what's your guess? Which of these words is of German origin? Yes, you are right! Because all of these terms come from the German language. Bratwurst that's how we call it in German, just means fried sausage. Yeah, and the terms Frankfurter and Wiener relate to the cities of their origin. Oh yes, we Germans love all kinds of sausages. Oh, okay. Next one then. Sauerkraut or das Sauerkraut in German which literally translates to sour cabbage. And by the way, I know that you English speaking guys call us Germans krauts. That's not really nice. My feelings are hurt. I mean, do we call you the porridges or the triple cheeseburgers or the Vegemites and also if you want to define us by what we eat then you should call us a kartoffels because that's more representative for us think about it Okay, are you guys hungry now? Would you maybe like some strudel for dessert? In German, der Strudel refers to a very yummy pastry dish and in German it can also mean the whirl effect in rivers. Der Strudel. Okay, do you guys like a spritzer when you're out at night to have a drink? It's wine mixed with soda water. The word spritzer comes from the German word spritzen, which means to splash or to spray. And even though this word originates from the German language, there is not such a beverage as spritzer in German. This kind of beverage, I think, is what we call in German die Weinschorle. Lager. But das Lager, how we say in German, refers to beer, which is stored for quite a while before it's being consumed and it comes from the German word lagern, which literally means to store. Prost! Okay guys, so you can see there is so many German loan words in the English language. There is actually many many more. For example, the adjective verboten or verboten in German, which means forbidden or prohibited. Or the adjective kaputt which means broken or busted in both languages. Another word, of course, from the food area is pretzel. It comes from the German word brezel, the South German bread specialty, which is quite yummy. One word that you probably know is schnapps. So schnapps is like a hard liquor or spirit which you drink like a shot. There is also the word zeitgeist, which means the spirit of time. And so on and so on. Yes, guys, we could continue this list for ages, but for today, this shall be it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you were able to realize how many German words you actually already know just for the fact that you speak English. Isn't that amazing? And in the next video, we're gonna talk about the cognates. So 
we're gonna get to know another big load of German words that you already know from the English language. So if you enjoyed this lesson today, please don't forget to give it a little like and if you don't want to miss out on the following lessons, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to read everything in detail, what you just listened to in this video, don't forget to check out my blog as well. My page is easypeasygerman.com. You can find a blog article for every video that I publish. So you can take all the time that you need to read through it again and recap and repeat. And before we finish, my question for all of you real quick. If you are an English native speaker, maybe you can tell us a little bit about these loan words that I introduced to you today. Do you actually use them on a daily basis or just rarely? Or were there actually even any words which I found in the dictionary that are not really in usage in your country at all? Please let us know. And if you are not an English native speaker, but you have another native language, why don't you let us know if you also have any German loan words in your language? That would be really interesting for all of us, I think. Okay, anyway, let me know also if you have any questions to me or if you have any kind of feedback. Yeah, I'm always very happy about feedback. Let me know what you like. Let me know if there's anything I can improve. Thanks again for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.